today we're going to have a quick look at just how the comprehensive discovery in IP Fabric is, it gives us an inventory that we're able to share with other platforms and use in other systems in order to make sure that we've got accurate data based on what's currently live in the network. As you can see, the inventory information here is thorough. There's plenty of information about sites where devices are stored, management information, um, the vendor uh, platform data and the version numbers. All, all of this is all good stuff. But wouldn't it be great if we could use this outside the platform? Well, of course we can. We've got options here, as you'd expect. We can export that data to CSV files um, like so. So we could literally copy that, paste that out into uh, a spreadsheet and use it there. We can provide the, a copy of this view of the data uh, through a URL to anyone who has a login for our system, right? So we can we can provide that to them and uh, and they can get exactly the same view that we're looking at here. But of course, the best way of getting data out of the platform is through our API. Um, if you click through on that question mark, as we've seen, you get information here about the endpoint uh, for the API itself, the method you use, and all the information that's in uh, the payload for the request and for the uh, for the response. All of that data is here as is the actual request payload that's been used to generate that list um, that displays in the device inventory. Fantastic stuff. So let's take a look at some demonstrations of just how we might use that. In our demo network, we've got an instance of IP Fabric, and we've got a machine that's running Python with the Nornir framework, the automation framework. Um, that sits alongside Python and allows you to, to build orchestrated workflows in a programmatic way. Okay, Now, what that needs to function, ideally, is a strong, um, up-to-date inventory. And how better to get that inventory than we have a plugin. It just so happens that one of the members of our fantastic community have developed exactly that plugin in order to, to hook the two systems together and pull the inventory data from IP Fabric and present it into Nornia. Um, and so we'll dig into that now. You can see we've got a Linux machine here um, on the right hand side, sitting over the top of our, uh, our window showing our uh, IP Fabric inventory at the back there. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to just start up. Um, uh, interactive Python. Now the setup there is just loading some libraries in the background, but essentially what they're doing is establishing um, the fact that we want to uh, to run the Nornir framework, and we can now uh, initialize a Nornir inventory using our IP Fabric plugin, um, as you can see here, in order to to make that connection between the two systems. Okay, really simple. Uh, if we just take a quick look at what the result of that um, initialization looks like. Yeah. You can see we've got a whole load of data here. And this is the inventory information for Nornir that we've pulled through from IP Fabric. Um, we can do a quick check just to, to verify that this is uh, hopefully correct. Um, let's have a look for L36 AC39. And you can see the management IP, 139127, we're using SSH. There's 139127, we're using SSH, we're in site 36. And just to check, there's our version number, 2017-08-09. There we go. So we can see that that data is accurate and been pulled through directly from IP Fabric. Awesome. Now, once it's in here, we can do some clever things like uh, filter that information so that we're only operating on a subset of the uh, of the devices. So we've just got the management IPs of the site 38 devices. But what do we do if that inventory changes? What happens? Well, as far as uh, as far as Norn is concerned, 
doesn't care. The plugin is just going to use the API from IP Fabric and carry on pulling the data back as it's updated. So we're, we're all good. But there are other systems in the ecosystem we need to worry about, right? There are things like, well, the monitoring platform, in our case, PRTG. We need to be sure that if we detect any changes, that those systems are updated as well. Let's say, for example, we've got uh, a change going ahead tonight to introduce a new site into the network, site, let's say, 45. There's a number of devices that are being uh, connected up and powered up, and IP Fabric will go away and do a discovery. Well, that's okay for IP Fabric. It'll go do its thing, collect that information, and that information will then be available to Nornia. But PRTG knows nothing at all about that. And the last thing that we want is for a monitoring system to not have information about active devices in the network. So what do we do? Well, IP Fabric has this capability um, to send triggers for um, external events outside the system called webhooks. Essentially, it's a, a request to a web server arbitrary web server outside the system that sends information about an activity that's just occurred. Well, IP Fabric will send that webhook on the basis of a snapshot completing or an intent rule being checked. So what we can do is we can create a Python script. That Python script will run a web server in effect and it will capture the webhook from IP Fabric that's all good but what does it do then how do we make sure that that we're able to update prtg simple enough we query ip fabrics inventory api so we go away and say right for this new snapshot tell me about all the devices that have been collected we compare it with the previous snapshot and so we know which devices have been added or removed along the way so we see the new devices from from site 45 and we go and we check their configuration. So we make the call back into IP Fabric and say, tell me about how they're configured for SNMP. Vital, because if we push information into PRTG, but it's set up wrongly, then it won't be able to monitor those devices. So that's all cool. We'll grab the information about those devices, and then we make some pushes into PRTG. Right, we, we take the inventory data, we create those records in PRTG, say, um, start monitoring them. But if those devices aren't actually configured for SNMP, we have a problem because we can't start them. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pause them. We're going to make sure that they don't uh, get started and we'll make sure that we raise that back to the, uh, the network admins to so that they can go ahead and make the changes that they need to to fix that problem but how do we do that well we need to now bring into uh into play service now the itsm that also has an inventory that needs to be kept up to date and that needs to know information about sites it needs to know information about serial numbers and so on so what we're going to do is push some inventory information through the same inventory information that we've taken uh, and pushed into PRTG and then we're also going to create a couple of incidents these are items that need attention from the operational teams okay in this case we're going to raise two incidents one is going to contain a list of all of the items that have been created in PRTG and have started being monitored because they're already configured for SNMP they can uh, we can validate that yes they've been started the second incident will be to go ahead and make configuration changes to no. the second incident is to raise an action on the operational team to go and make config changes to the devices that haven't yet been configured for SNMP and then when they have to manually go into PRTG and actually start the monitoring process. And then just for completeness we know that the, um, the engineering teams use WebEx teams to communicate amongst themselves so what we can do is we can get our script to raise a message into WebEx Teams to say, go and check on these incidents in service now because 
there's some actions that you need to take and some information that you need to see. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start our script running here. So it's set and waiting, ready for our webhooks. And away we go. Now, we're using Python, um, using a, uh, a framework called Flask, which enables us to basically create that web server we talked about in order to receive the webhook requests. Okay, um, while that's now sitting waiting, what we'll do over in IP Fabric is get our uh, snapshot underway and we'll load the one here rather than go and do the discovery a bit quicker we'll load this snapshot which is um, containing our site 45 devices once they've been discovered after our changes have been made and we can see the uh, the snapshot started now while that's doing its thing what we'll do is we'll just have a look at the other systems just to make sure that they're in a state we'd expect them to be so here's PRTG, and PRTG, as you can see, is is currently monitoring nothing at all um, in for Site 45. So um, we've got our template device, and that's all in service now. You can see here we've got two incidents, one of which is about my printer being out of toner, and the other one being a problem with email. So nothing of interest and the inventory you can see is pretty much empty I save a few test devices here so hopefully what we're going to find is once IP fabric um, has done its discovery and it's well underway um, that will get to a stage where some action will occur so while we're waiting I'll um, I think we'll fast forward that discovery So when the discovery completes, this is now going ahead and building the topology information for um, for the maps and so on. Um, once that is actually finished, you can see the information starts to appear. And then on the right hand side, um, our webhook is basically saying the snapshot's been completed and there's, and there's some action. So what's it doing? It's found the two snapshots. It's fetched the differences between the last load and the previous loaded. And now you can see it's steadily looping through all of those devices. Now, first thing, updating devices, but pausing them, awaiting SNMP config. Then it's creating some service now. Then there's some IP fabric messages. And again, we're stepping through gradually through the information. And then look at the top right. We've just got our WebEx Teams, first WebEx Teams message. We're stepping through all of these different elements. It's telling us that SNMP is not configured on certain devices and is configured on others and um, has sent up our little WebEx Teams messages throughout. So let's have a look at those WebEx Teams messages and see exactly what it is that we're being told. OK, so here's WebEx Teams and we've got two messages of interest. Here's the first one. And this is basically uh, uh, an incident 1077 which has basically been triggered by our automatic update. These devices have basically been added to PRTG, auto-discovered, and are now monitoring. Now, our second incident, 10078, is saying that it's triggered, uh, been triggered by the update, but it's added the devices to PRTG and paused them, and is awaiting device configuration. So this needs some action. So let's just click through on that. And that should open up in our web browser, like so. And you can see 10078 is high impact, high urgency, critical, because, again, we can't be doing with having devices not being monitored in the, on the live network. So our action is that we require some SNMP config on these newly discovered devices. If we scroll down here, those are the four devices. So straight away, we've had the uh, the incident message appear in WebEx Teams. We've had the message appear now in ServiceNow, and that has now been raised. If we go back to the list of service, the list of incidents, you can see there's the, there's the second incident, 
and that one is telling us here's the informational uh, incident that's just telling us that these devices have been newly added to PRTG. And just to complete the picture, if I refresh the inventory in service now, you can see all of the L45 devices appeared. If I just click through on one of them as an example, you can see that it, the location is showing up here. If I preview that, it gives me the information it's in Prague. Fair enough. And similarly, Cisco, this has referenced the Cisco record in the platform. Um, we've inserted the IP address as the serial number because it's a virtual device. We don't have the, a real serial number, but we could have put a serial number in there along with all of this other information if we'd wanted. So it just goes to show what we can, what we can do. Cool. So let's have a quick look at PRTG. PRTG is showing me some green, which is always a good sign. Um, we've got two devices which have been paused, the two initial ones, but here we go. We've got a big long list here of devices that have been set up in PRTG and are now in a monitoring state. There's a couple more that have been paused and then a couple more there um, that haven't been. So the idea is that these four devices that are currently paused are, in fact, the four from our, uh, from our incident. These four, R6, R9, XR12 and EXR1. Well, there's XR12 and EXR1. And there's R6 and R9. So, uh, yeah, we're, they're ready and waiting to go. So as soon as we've configured those, um, then they'll be available to be unpaused and we can make, make a start with monitoring them. And just to complete the picture, let's go back to have a quick look at Nornia. The initializer inventory using our IP Fabric plugin. We can check to make sure that our inventory looks good. And there we go, so it's all there. And then let's have a look at site 45. And see, there we go, we have some devices. And then just to go back to complete the picture, we'll check on the inventory in IP Fabric itself. Look at site 45, and there you can see a big list of devices. And so there we have it. We've gone through, um, basically built that Python script to provide integration between IP Fabric's inventory and all of the other platforms that we've looked at there. Um, and provided the communication along the way. I hope that was useful.